Hello, good morning everybody. So today we are going to discuss about the trigger where we will cover uh, first we will understand the trigger then we will see some scenario based questions tricky question and answers and we can see some practical which were asked in interview okay so uh, let's start with the trigger so basically what is the trigger so when you perform any dml operation dml means create update or delete any record so automatically trigger, trigger will fire uh, automatically it will fire so uh, this is called a trigger right because when we perform any DML operation at that time it automatically occurs now what all are the trigger events so basically there are seven type of events uh, currently we are discussing on that is before insert after insert before update after update before delete after delete and one another is there that is after undelete after undelete means you have deleted that record and now you are going to the recycle bin and select it and just restore at that moment it will occur we will see this one in programmatically also now when and what type of events are there and when it will be available right this is in every trigger inter, uh, means, uh, interview questions okay you will see this question because interview will ask this question okay now before insert if you will see the before insert it will available at the time of trigger new and it will not available for trigger old trigger new map and old map whereas after insert will be available in trigger new and new map also okay but before update after update it is this will available on every phase either trigger new old new map or old map and if you will see the delete delete will available on every time on old or old map okay because id is already available here so before delete and after delete will be available on the trigger old and old map and uh, as this after undelete so after undelete means it is going to reinsert your data so it work as after insert okay so it will be available on trigger new and new map so uh, what i want to say here just under understand this diagram so you will come to know okay next so uh, basically if you will see what is the difference between trigger new and new map here so mostly you will see this kind of uh, questions by the interviewer so here what you have to describe so trigger new is a list of a record so suppose you are inserting a one record right and if you see that it, uh, I have chosen one uh, for loop here in yellow color here what I am doing so we, we will this will create at the time of when you create a, a object object of account so trigger new will hold all the data trigger new will hold all the data so it will available by a dot field name a dot field name a dot whatever the field name is there right just you have to put a dot and the field name so you will get the data so here what's the trigger new means it holds the current record which is being processed by when you perform any action like a uh, uh, or in type insert or update or delete so it will be sorry not in delete insert or update it will be available whereas trigger new trigger new hold the same thing but based on the id right based on the id we can pull each and every record okay here what's the difference in trigger new we will get everything in a set of a record but here we will get a record in a map and from the map we will get the detail from the id so i will show you the example as well now what you have to perform means how you can avoid the recursive trigger okay so to avoid the recursive trigger see there are multiple things uh, that you can do you can create a class 
which hold the boolean variable or in an existing class you can create a boolean variable and in a boolean variable you will make it at a first time it will be false or maybe true when it got executed then it will be opposite if you have chosen false then it will be true and if you have chosen uh, true then it will be a false so it will convert the value and that will be a static value so what will happen in a complete transaction okay in a complete transaction it will maintain the it will maintain the value it will be true or false through that we can avoid the recursive trigger okay now one is a pretty good question that intro will ask how to populate the error okay from trigger to page so see we can provide two type of error first error is on the top of the page a specific page right so if there is any logical error so we can populate on the on the top of the page but if some values are missing or based on some criteria something is missing so we can populate on the field so see in a for loop i have created account object here acc okay acc dot add error add error means it will populate on the top of the screen but if you want to populate on the field so acc dot what name of the field and add error so it will give you the error on the screen okay so this is a tricky question you may face this question in many mnc's next so can we call batch apex in trigger yes we can call the apex batch in trigger so just suppose uh, my batch name is batch on account so database dot execute batch and your uh, new and the name of the batch you want to execute you can simplify it and it will run but uh, it is not good practice to to do this activity it means on base of the trigger uh, you are firing on uh, you are calling the batch so it is not a good practice but we can if you have some scenario we can use it so question 8 is also uh, very uh, highly asked by the many interviewers that is when you have to use before or after what's the logic behind it right so in before insert is mostly used for validations mostly for the validations okay means you have to perform the action on that same same object you know same record right then we use before insert whereas after insert we will use when we have a some complex logic right because here we got the id suppose i have i'm creating account okay so i when i got an id through the reference i need to create another record or to update any another object at that moment i can perform this action okay so if you want to do the validation then try to use in before when you have to perform from contact you want to perform an activity on account at that moment we will use after it so next one is can a trigger make a call out a call to apex class out yes we can okay but we make sure that it should be asynchronous because we can't wait for the response right so that's the reason we are using future method okay to use the apex call out from the trigger and it is mandatory to use the future method when you are calling apex call out call out from the trigger is there any limitation on a uh, number of triggers on an object so yes uh, see uh, what happen there is a no limit one object one object can hold multiple trigger but if you will see uh, the best practices of salesforce it will tell you we have one object one trigger okay it should be your best practice so if you want to uh, keep changing on that so you can keep changing on it but through the handler or through the uh, helper classes we are going to control each and everything right but you should avoid multiple triggers in a same class sorry multiple uh, trigger on same object okay so is the id of the record change if we undelete it no here one thing is that when suppose you have deleted one record and 
again when after undelete the id will be same that's the reason it is coming in trigger old and old map okay so it is newly available to you okay now what will be the best practice of trigger so there are few best practice that other interview will ask so write one trigger per object okay this is one of the best practice second context specific handler method means if you want to perform operation on is update so use it uh, is before update okay so if we'll maintain this one so it will not means it your code will not read in multiple time okay we have lot of things we are going to discuss so we have to use is before is running okay so we have to use this kind of uh, a context specific handlers to handle it now bulkify your code so you can write your trigger in many way right but a uh, single record right but if you will perform uh, some actions from data loader if you perform some dml operation from data loader right so you should write your code in a bulkify manner bulkify manner means hold the data in a list basis on the list or set perform the your actions so list and set can handle multiple records at a time okay now avoid sql queries or dml statement inside the loop so see it's a trigger right trigger can run multiple stages in a multiple stages right so we have to write our query in a such a way or dml operation in such a way that it should avoid to run multiple times we should avoid and use future method because for call out if you want to update some data or something right so uh, some 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 bulk kind of operations right for uh, suppose if you are using uh, some um, updates with a standard non standard or a custom object at the same time so use the future method appropriately in a trigger now query last set of data it, it means that we have a limit right 50k of limit so we have to use our where clause in such a way that it can occupy what we re really require to use to for any operation and the last one is avoid hard coding id so if you want it's a compulsory to use the hard code id i will recommend it to use in custom setting or custom metadata from there you can pull the record but always try to avoid it so uh, this is for uh, just for a uh, first phase i will come up with second phase shortly thank you please like and subscribe the channel thank you